We are live. Hello everyone on a weekend stream. Today I'm going to be checking out two new homebrew games for the Game Boy. Uh, let me just go on camera so you can see them. There we go. So today we'll be checking out Melon Journey and From Below Pocket. We're going to start with this one. As I think this is the shorter of the two. From what I can tell it looks like Tetris but there's some sort of monster that's coming up from the depths and uh, trying to eat you or something. So we'll see how that goes. Let's just take a quick look at the instruction manual before we get started in the game itself. And it looks to be in full colour. I haven't got my top down camera turned on. We've got some nice illustrations in there with some interesting controls, like there's something to do with things falling down from a parachute. Not too sure what's going on there. Does that mean like hard drop, maybe? We'll see. And press select to hit something. We'll see in just a minute. There's three different game modes. There's timed Fixed mode and classic mode, traditional block dropping gameplay that you know and love. The Kraken is sleeping and won't cause you any trouble. No gimmicks, just skill. Okay, so it's got a normal Tetris mode in there as well. And then it also has some other ones. A timed one. Every 10 seconds, the Kraken attacks, pushing garbage blocks onto the screen. The garbage can be cleared like normal. A fixed mode. The Kraken attacks every time a block lands. So make every move count. That one sounds interesting. We'll try all three. And there's also a multiplayer mode as well. I haven't got anyone else to try it with, or anyone with another copy of the game, but that's cool. And there's a few special thanks at the back. So let's check out From Below Pocket. And then after that we're going to be checking out another Game Boy homebrew game called Melon Journey. Oh yeah, there was something else cool that, um, that came with this. So the game is by Broke Studio. And it also came with this, which is pretty cool. It's like on drinks coaster that I have been using, but I don't want to get it damaged, so I'm not going to use it that much. But yeah, really nice little addition to the package there. So with that said, let's get started and check out From Below Pocket. Here we go. So we have a bunch of different options. We have timed. Oh, there's, there's the different game options. Okay. Fixed attacks when the block lands. Uh, timed attack in 10 seconds. And classic. Let's start with timed mode, shall we? Hopefully you can all hear me and see me okay. Hopefully you can hear the game. Uh, let's see, level, you get to choose from level 0 to 9. Have music on or off, sounds on or off. Hard drop, you get the option to tap or hold. I guess we will use tap, that sounds like the normal one. Yeah, whoa, I'm live on a Saturday. I wasn't really planning to either, but I've got a lot of homebrew games to get through. Here's just some of them, and I wanted to do a homebrew video for this Friday, so I thought I would try and get a bit of a head start by getting some gameplay on the weekend so I don't have to rush too much after work, because work is crazy at the minute, and I'm just getting really fed up with it, I'm getting really tired, so I thought I will use any free time I've got this weekend, and I just came back from going out shopping with some friends, so I thought now is a good time, I've got a few hours. So let's uh, check some of these games out. And you're playing Mother 3. Enjoy. It's something I've been meaning to play for a long time. Okay, do we have hold or anything like that? No. Nope. We can press select for some reason to move a tentacle up the screen. Not sure what benefit that has. It's, yeah, I don't really understand what's going on there. Kind of weird having hard drop but not having shadow pieces. I wonder whether that's something that you can enable. Because like there, on such a big screen, it's hard to tell because there's no grid. Which is very weird not to have a grid on this kind of game. How do you know whether you've lined up properly or not? Um, and yeah, no hold as well on a modern version of Tetris, which is very strange. Especially coming from Tetris Rosy Retrospective, which did have... A uh, hold block is going to make this more awkward to play. I don't like not being able to line up where the pieces are. I have to keep looking at the top of the screen, and the screen I'm looking at is much bigger than what you guys can see. 
I'm playing it on my on my ultra wide monitor there, so I've got like a, a massive display in front of me just for playing a little Game Boy game. Huh. Oh yeah, have a look over there. There's my cat asleep on the chair. He was on this chair, but I kicked him off. I think we might have to restart this. I have failed badly already. Let's see if we can claw our way back. Uh, not with that. Oh my god. I think we're doomed. Uh, can we get back? Oh, I should have used that over there. Now I've blocked that entrance off. Oh, he's pushing blocks up on the side as well. Oh no. I'll fight back. The music's getting a bit intense too. Ah, uh, I don't want that. Can we still? I'm still fighting. Ah! Uh, how am I still alive? Oh, something else happened a bit further down for some reason. Okay, cool. It does have rotating pieces the other direction. Some versions of Tetris don't have that. Oh, there we go. Alright, I'm going to play it properly this time. That was just a little, uh, a little test run. I can't believe how that went. Alright, let's try doing it properly now. I wonder whether there's a way to make this screen any smaller. It's like, like I have to look up and down to see the top of the screen compared to the bottom. It was not made for this. Size, yeah, I'm messing up without a grid. Oh my god. I am good at Tetris, honestly. I'm getting confused by that tentacle, like, is there... Was there a block there or not? I couldn't tell. It's got some nice music. Hopefully you can hear that okay, because it sounds really cool. Almost like Anna Managuchi. I like it. Some of my favourite things about these homebrew games is just hearing the awesome chip tune music that you guys produce. I wish I was that talented. Or have the time to try it, I guess. Ah! Yeah, the only reason I'm messing up is because I can't tell how far up the screen they are. Oh, I can't do anything with that one. Wait, is that lining up there? Yes. Maybe I shouldn't rely on the hard drop so much. Oh yeah, if you guys haven't tried it, definitely check out Rosie Retrospect Retrospection, I think it's called. The Tetris mod with a DX patch. It's just incredible. I always thought the Wonderswan version of Tetris was my favourite portable version, but I might actually say Rosie Retrospection is now. Is that good? It's like every modern enhancement in one game. On the original system too, which is awesome. I think I'm doing better than last time, maybe. Still not doing great though. You got the Scott Pilgrim game soundtrack on vinyl. Nice. How does it sound on vinyl? That's really cool. I used to love their old albums. Was it Power? Power Wave? I can't remember now, but I was a massive fan at, at college. But I really didn't like USA. I thought that was a weird 
direction for them to go. I really didn't like the new style they went for with that. Oh no, I'm dead. Like a vinyl smooth out chip tunes. I've never heard chip tune on vinyl before, so I'm very intrigued as to how that sounds. Got the Tetris pack because of my video and love it. You were already a huge Tetris fan. Oh, that's fantastic. It's so good, isn't it? It's definitely the best one. And if you can, try out the Wonderswan version as well on an emulator because that is amazing what they managed to do on that system. I love how fast it is and how cool the sound effects are on that one. Like it's so boom, 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 boom. Like you can really get into the rhythm. It's so visceral almost. It's so cool. Definitely better than any of the other official versions. This one seems nice. It's very weird that there's no sound effects. I just noticed. Like one of my favourite things about Tetris is like hearing the lines disappear, but there's nothing in this, which is a little bit of an oversight. I like it in Tetris Plus where it shouts out like triple Tetris as you as you go in. I think that's really cool. And I also love the puzzle mode in that one. In fact, uh, Tetris Plus, I actually found out that you can actually get Tetris Plus 2, the arcade game, which I thought never got actually released at home, but you can actually buy one of those arcade... Ah, it pushed it up! You can buy one of those arcade sticks, Atari arcade stick things, and one of them, the one that's got 100 games on, actually has Tetris Plus 2. So I might try and track that down one day and do a, do a stream checking it out, because I've always wanted to play that after I first played it on the uh, PS1 years ago. And it's still one I go back to all the time. I've got a handheld emulator to review and the first thing I tried on there was Tetris Plus. Oh, that's the wrong way around. Weirdly limited colours as well for the blocks. I usually like how all the blocks are really different colours, like candy, but this one kind of... They're all the same colour. They just have different patterns inside. I wonder whether you can change that in the menu. There might be a way of changing the colour scheme. Oh, apparently I got rid of the uh, Kraken, although he's... Uh, left his tray on behind. Whatever that means. Ah, I'm not getting the right block here. Okay, I'm going to have to fill that in, I guess. Oh my god, please! Still only got to level 2. Okay. We're not doing very well. Uh, just on your break, love this game. And you just got a physical. Awesome. Maybe it's to represent water. I don't know, why would the water stay there? Unless it's like coming up from the bottom and it's just stuck there. Maybe that's why. Working on a Saturday. Hopefully you don't have to work too long. I've just been out shopping today. Bought myself some new shoes. And some chocolate. Oh. I think it just pushed a block up on its own then and deleted something. I'm going to try and focus better this time and actually not mess anything up because of the size of the screen. Oh, I almost messed something up then because of my own mistake. This definitely sounds like Scott Pilgrim. Or like Mega Man, which I guess are uh, kind of similar anyway. Alright, let's get a Tetris. It's so weird there's no sound effects. There definitely should be something. It feels a little anticlimactic to get a Tetris and nothing happens. Nothing different happens anyway. Like at least get some extra sparks or something. Oh no, I haven't got anywhere to put it. Oh. 
Again, the screen's too big. I messed up there. Let's see if we can fix it. Oh, that, wow, that was an easy fix. Okay, let's not do that again. Let's fill that gap in. We can leave that, I guess. I haven't got anywhere to put it. Oh no. Alright, we need to fix this now. That'll help a little bit. We need another straight one now. The best thing to do in Tetris is if you've made a mistake. Uh, try not to do that, for one thing. Try and balance on a tower that doesn't have any blocks underneath. And then you can free it up again like that. And then hopefully... Oh, I've messed up. Sometimes something's happening and then something else disappears and I don't know why. Yeah, I've messed up again. And I can't even blame the Kraken because this is all just my own doing. Basically try and get rid of any sort of bubbles in the stage like that. Nice, we have a nice clean row now. So like where that one was, leave a gap there so that you can empty it out again. Uh, I just need another straight one. One more straight one, please. There we go. See? Now it's safe again. Unless something terrible happens and I don't get any straight pieces. Uh, I might have to just... Oh, no, now I get one. That's not fair. Okay, we're done. Did I get past level two? Yay, level four. Okay. We're getting slightly better. Level four this time. I want to check out the other game modes as well, but I want to see how far I can get this. Interestingly, it seems like the speed doesn't change. I'm scared to do hard drop from a distance now because the screen's so big I can't see the top and the bottom in one go. I'm surprised that... I thought the Kraken would do more than it actually does. You don't really notice it most of the time. I wonder whether the other mode is a lot more difficult because it does it every time. Every time you place a block. Be interesting. We can check that one out after this. So, what's everyone else been up to this weekend? Or what have you been up to so far? And what plans have you got? Or what games are you planning to play? I've got a whole bunch of videos that I want to work on, but I have to do them one at a time, else I'll get overwhelmed. And excitingly, I've actually started to remake my game that I made a few years ago. I found the original source code and I got it up and running on the PC. So I've been working quite hard on getting it to run on uh, a HTML5 version so that I can upload it to itch.io and people can play it in the web browser. So that'll be really cool and I'll make a video announcing that whenever I've got around to getting it to work properly. It's nearly there, I just haven't got the sound effects working. And some of the boss areas don't work as well, so I need to rework them. But it's like 90% still there, which is amazing. Considering I didn't think I had any of it. Went to a new coffee shop in your neighbourhood, that's nice. Play another three and watch and stream, then head into an event with live ice sculptures. Wow. That sounds interesting. Must be very cold where you are if you can have ice sculptures. Have fun with that, that sounds really cool.
Pun intended. I just realised what I said. Playing Arkham City. Nice. A classic. They do it every year on the coldest day of the year. How do they know when the coldest day of the year is going to be? I was supposed to be in London this weekend, but we couldn't get to the event that we were going to because of train strikes. So I didn't really know what to do with myself at first. I was supposed to be at Anime Con in London. But from what we've heard of the people who had our table, it's not doing too well anyway, so it doesn't sound like we missed out on much. Ah, oh, I don't want that piece. Or that one, really. Or that. Giving me junk. Oh my god. What have I done? Just fill in whatever I can, I guess. Maybe I need to stop building towers and play a bit more aggressively. I wish there was a hold button. I'm so used to modern Tetris. It's so difficult to get back to this. No, I don't need that. That was a pretty good save though. Ah! Did we get to level 5? Yay, we got to level 5. <laughs> right, let's have one more go and then we'll try out some of the other... Um, some of the other modes. I'll ask another question to anyone who's watching the stream. Have you found any good YouTube videos or channels recently? Any new channels that you've discovered? I was watching a really cool last one, uh, cool one last night. I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically a guy who does like game jam competitions, but he does like one every single month, and he um, documents his progress through the jam. And it was so cool to see how like he um, figures out solutions to all the problems that he's coming across in like really fast time before the jam finishes and then he shows off the results and says what he thought went well and what could be done better next time and stuff. So after this I might find the name of the channel so I can tell you guys about it because I was really enjoying uh, watching a few of his older videos yesterday. I've been feeling the itch to go back into game dev again so I've been watching a lot of game dev YouTube videos. But that's definitely one of the best ones that I've found so far. And I'm planning to enter Game Maker's Toolkit Game Jam this year as well in July. I think it's in July anyway. So hopefully I can at least get the basics of a game engine down by then. And try and make something cool. Right, okay, we have cleared a gap here. I wonder what happens if I do this. Oh, nothing. It just still exists. I really thought that was going to, like, cut through it or something, but nothing happened. Probably screwed myself over now, haven't I? Uh. Yeah, I'm screwed. Oh, if only I'd... Oh, there's a straight piece right there. If I'd have put that down there. Right, let's quit and check out some of the other modes. Let's see what else is on here. So, that was the timed one. Let's try. Fixed. So, this is going to be interesting. Oh, I had sounds off. 
Oh, weird. I don't know why that was off by default unless I did it by mistake last time. Alright, let's try fixed mode. This should be a lot harder by the sounds of it because every time you put something down, it's going to start poking up from the bottom. Okay, interesting. Oh my god, this is going to be a lot harder. And I suppose you have to keep an eye on where it's coming from as well. H drop tap is hard drop, so when you press up like this, like... So I'm press up now, and then it goes straight down to the bottom. I don't know what H drop hold is, I guess you have to hold up in order for it to drop down. Which is weird, I've never played a Tetris game where that's an option before. But yeah, hard drop up makes sense. Technically, that's how Tetris was always designed originally. Like the original, whatever, Russian computer version of Tetris. It didn't actually have holding down to move the block slower, it only had hard drop. Which is really interesting. And then on the Nintendo version, they changed it. But they also made the controls really weird on the Famicom version originally. So I'm glad they fixed that for the uh, overseas release. I like the fact that you only need to hit the arm once for it to disappear. And it gives you a little bit of time. And then it'll fall down. And clear any blocks that weren't covered as well, that's interesting. This mode's more fun, actually. Ah! Apart from when that happens. I don't know if I can fix it. Oh, we can do that at least. Oh, I think he got shocked then. I don't know why it flashed like that. I love the music. Oh, I missed a bit there. Chucked out Quiet Nerd. He's making a mobile log cabin and went camping in it. How does a mobile log cabin work? Is it like something he can attach onto a trailer and take around with him? That's really cool. I would love to stay in a log cabin. I kind of have daydreams of going to a log cabin and just spending a weekend there writing. I think that'd be so relaxing and good to get away from everything and just focus on doing a good script or writing a book or something. I would love to go on a, a getaway like that at some point. But I've never heard of a mobile log cabin before, that's interesting. Yeah, Game Boy chip tunes at their best. Who did the soundtrack for this? It's really cool, really good. I wonder if it's someone that I've heard of. I know quite a few chiptune people. Hey Scott, thanks for all the content. Love the homebrew games and ROM hacks. Can't wait for the Pokemon ROM hack one. Yeah, the Pokemon one might take a while. I was planning on doing the Pokemon one for this week, and I played through like the first few minutes of each ROM hack, and then it basically just ended up me visiting Professor Oak ten times and seeing a different set of starters. So it's going to take a, a while, I think, before I can properly play them long enough to actually know what to talk about. But in the meantime, there's lots of uh, exciting exciting stuff coming. Um, yeah, I don't know who Peg Mode is, but I've brought into the instructions. Can you actually see that? There you go. Music by Peg Mode. And there's some of the other people. And Coffee Bat as well. I've heard of Coffee Bat before. Based on the NES game from below. And there's some other people as well. Some people there were in the uh, Game Jam competition that I was a judge for recently. Which is cool. That's another video that I want to make soon as well. Is the uh, top 15 entries from the Game Boy Game Jam. Now that the results are out. Take your time this minute. Yeah. I've found a list of 10 that I want to talk about. And that's only for... Gen 1 and 2, so I'm sure there's hundreds for Gen 3 as well because people love the GBA games. But I've found so many really interesting ones, like all brand new Pokemon designs and everything. Four ads in a row, what the hell? 
And I bet I don't even see any of that money. That's ridiculous. I'm so sorry you had to sit through that. That's just Twitch trying to be... I, w I would say trying to be greedy, but apparently they've never actually managed to turn any sort of profit, so I don't know what their solution will be. If there even is one. They had to pull out of South Korea entirely because it was too expensive. Twitch keeps audio going, that's cool. I know they didn't used to. They used to take up the whole screen and then it was sort of like... Now they give you the option to see the screen in the corner. And they can still hear it as well, so... That is better in some ways, then. Nice. Oh, no, I missed it. I don't know what I was doing at the start. I think I turned the sound effects off somehow. Oh, it's starting to get a lot faster now. What level are we on? Level 6. I've actually got further in this mode. I thought this mode would be harder. This music's awesome. It kind of reminds me of the Tobu Tobu Girl music as well. Like, really energetic. I love it. There's just something about the Game Boy sound chip. It sounds so good. Well, somehow got two then. I think the bits that look like dirt, if they're not balanced over anything, they fall down twice to fill the gap. Come on, I need a straight piece. There we go. Thank you. For once it listened to me. And another one. And... Oh, it did hit it. Yes, I wasn't sure if that would or not. Nice. We're doing a lot better on this mode. I thought this mode would be harder. It's actually a lot easier for some reason. Smooth bleeps, indeed. Ah! Good job I paused then. I was trying to read the chat. In a way, it's like a free line piece moving upwards. Yeah, I guess so. Oh my god! Oh, that was close. It kind of freed me. Okay. Oh no! Sometimes it messes up though, like that. Uh, stop. It does go after a while as well, which is uh, pretty good. And I guess you can get extra lines sometimes as well, like that, without really realising that you're going to. I need another straight piece to go down that side. Yes, it listened to me again. Can I have a straight piece, please? Not yet, it said. Yeah, there we go. That was close. I think it's going to get harder now because I can't actually get... Oh my god, I'm dead. Level 9, though. That was good. I'm going to leave that one on level 9. If I tried Portal 64, I haven't, but I've seen videos of it and it's very impressive. And talking of N64 as well, there's a bunch of like indie games with N64 style graphics, which I want to try out too. And the Celeste devs have just made like a 3D N64 version of Celeste, which sounds really cool. Uh, how long have I been going? 37 minutes. I might play this one for an hour, and then for the next hour we'll move on to this one here called Melon Journey, which seems like a really nice like RPG style game. Should we try the other type of hard drop and see what that does? Oh. Weird. It's just more of the same. You just have to hold it down longer. Yeah, there's there's no point having it on that mode. Uh, let's just quit out and load it back up again. Will it keep my saves because I reset? I don't know. 
Yeah, it did. Nice. Uh, should we try classic mode? Let's just see how it plays compared to regular Tetris. Let's see how classic mode is. He's asleep this time. Oh my god, I messed up already. I really wish there was an option to put on the shadow piece at the bottom. Because I'm making so many mistakes because I can't tell where the pieces are lined up. I'm definitely going to bring that up in the video. They should have included shadow. And hold, if we're being picky. And it's not like the Game Boy can't do that because I've seen it before. You can see comments that aren't showing up on Twitch. That's because they're coming from YouTube. Because I'm streaming this on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. So you can actually tell if they've got a little red icon next to them, that means they came from YouTube. And if they've got the purple one, that means they came from Twitch. So it might get a little confusing if people start having conversations with people on one platform or the other. But hopefully it's not too much of an issue. I mostly did it because I like saving the videos on YouTube for people to watch later. And uh, if it's on YouTube to begin with, I don't actually need to download the video. Yeah, there's something called Restream. That's, that's how I'm doing this. So you just boot that up and then you, you just log into both places. And you can just stream to both of them at the same time, which is great. So why not? And Twitch lets anyone stream to anywhere now. They didn't used to. If you were an affiliate before, you were forced to stream only on Twitch, but they've lifted that restriction. Which is great, so why not take advantage of it? But yeah, hopefully it's not too confusing seeing some chats from one platform and not the other. But the experience of watching and chatting should be the same on both, as far as I'm aware. So just take your pick. Hey, Gion's here! Yeah, we're checking out some homebrew games today. I, uh, I've got a whole bunch here and there's some more on the table, so I thought it was time... It was time to start getting through them. Some of them were sent to me, some of them I pre-ordered. Some of them I've had lying around for a while. So, it is time, finally, for another compilation video. I think that's what I'm going to do, like, I'm going to wait until I've got, like, five or six, and then just do a big video sharing my thoughts about all of them. Which I think people enjoy those more than the separate um, individual episodes, anyway. So I'm happy doing that. It means I don't get burnt out doing too much homebrew stuff as well. So, fingers crossed I can get through these six that I've got here. And on Friday, there'll be a new homebrew video on the main channel. <coughs> Compilations are the best way. Yeah, for sure. I feel like even for games in general, compilations are the best way. Just people seem more interested in seeing a variety of things. Rather than just one. Because I guess there's more chance of them being interested in something in the video. You haven't missed any yet, this is the first one. I've just been checking out all the different game modes. And the next one we're going to play is this one, so... If you stick around for a bit longer, in about 15 minutes, I'm going to start playing this one instead, which is, uh, sounds interesting, it's actually based off an RPG Maker game that someone ported to the Game Boy, I think, so we'll see what that's like. I don't know anything about the story, I just know it looks cute. Hey, uh, I can't see what your username is. XLFR, seems like a good version of Tetris. Yeah, I don't know whether you can actually still get this one or not. You can probably get the ROM off itch.io or something. Yeah, the version I'm playing now is literally just classic Tetris, but... After this... I'll go back onto one of the other modes. How does it compare to established Tetris? 
Uh, feels basically the same. There's a few things that slightly annoy me compared to some of the mods for the Game Boy Tetris, at least. So it doesn't have it doesn't have hold, even though it kind of plays like a modern version of Tetris. Um, so it is a little bit more difficult in the sense that you can't get rid of a block you don't want. You can only see one thing that's coming up next as well, which is uh, something that I would have expected to be able to see, like, three, I guess, in a modern style Tetris. Um, and there's no shadow piece as well, which is really frustrating, especially playing it on a big screen like this, because I can't see whether I've lined up with the right gap or not. So there's a few things I wish they'd done, but on the whole it plays really well, so I can't really complain. Uh, I think we're at the end of this run. Yeah. I keep trying to press something to do hold and there isn't anything. Okay, we got one more. Can we get another one? No. Maybe one more. Maybe two more? We can get two. Can we keep going? No. Oh my god, yeah, three. Got a few extra ones. Level six, not bad. Right, let's for the last uh, time playing this. Shall we try? So there was basically three different modes. There's classic, which is just regular Tetris. There's timed, where a tentacle comes up from the bottom of the screen every ten seconds, and then there's fixed, where every time a block lands on the screen, the tentacle moves up by one, which I actually found a little bit easier. So I might try the timed one again and see how we get on with this. So as you can see now, that Kraken at the bottom is awake, and you can see the orange thing moving across the bottom of the screen. Eventually that's going to st oh, I messed up again already because I can't see where they're lining up. It really needs some sort of shadow piece, it's really throwing me off. Well, maybe it's my fault for playing on a massive monitor right in front of my face, but it's the only choice I've got. You know, it's supposed to be on, uh, on a screen that size. So bad at games, how dare you? It's the screen that's at fault, not me. I'm good at games, look. Watches me fail. So as I was saying, this starts off pretty easy, but every 10 seconds, if you can see the tentacle down there, once it starts getting onto the board, it's actually going to push that column up. Um, so basically, if you're trying to line something up and that's moved, then it will sort of mess up every, all your plans. So I'll actually leave it for a little bit to build up so I can show you what it does. We'll leave a gap there for a four piece. There you go. So you can see it pushed up by one. It starts off fairly simple, but once that starts filling up more of the board... Like, it's going to start doing it again now. But when you go down there, if you actually make a line and it goes in front of the tentacle, it'll go back down and then it sort of resets. So it's a really interesting mode, and I've not really seen anything like this in any other versions of Tetris. So it's definitely unique. And I wonder how the NES version compares to this as well, because originally this was a homebrew game for the NES, not the Game Boy. And this is based on that version, so... I wonder whether it's too late to ask for a NES version to be sent over. For a comparison. They might not have any more left if it was a pre-order thing. Um, and the highest that I've got on this mode is level 6, I think, so... Ah! See how it messed that up? I don't know if I'll be able to fix that either with that. Uh, oh, maybe if I can spin it round. Yeah. That worked. There we go, now we got rid of it again. I need to remember that these early levels, the blocks actually move quite slow, so you've got time to think and plan ahead a little bit. I don't like that tower I'm building. Let's see if we can clear that a little bit. I want to fix that gap down there too. No, I think that gap is well and truly closed off at this point. Yeah, I'm glad we found the sound effect. It was a bit weird. Uh, I'm actually going to leave that clear. 
This is what I was talking about earlier. Like, don't put any blocks on top of where there's a gap on the screen. Because it makes it more difficult to open it back up again. Whereas now, now we can actually fill that in. And now we're back to a solid board again, which is what you always want. And then with this one, you want to go in like that and fill in that gap there too. Now it feels safer. And we're on level 3 already and we're actually doing really well. We've got a nice clean board. Let's build that side up a little bit. I probably should have just gone a bit slower then and waited for that to start appearing. But you can see how it might mess you up if it pushes things as you're trying to plan something. So if we go down there now, that'll hit it and it'll disappear for a minute. There we go. That was easy to get rid of. Now if we wait a bit, hopefully, that moves up. Oh, I just missed it. Did you see that? We can get rid of it now though. There we go. I'm doing a lot better this time. I think I just had to learn the quirks of this game's movement compared to uh, some of the versions of Tetris that I'm used to. I don't really want to use that there. Might not have much of a choice. Come on, give me a straight piece. When I asked for one last time, it gave me one. Oh no. That's when you can start getting messed up here. Now I just have to keep playing until I get a straight piece. Oh no! It's a bit late. He tried to get me then as well. Hey, we're on level 6. We've managed to equal the best score anyway. Maybe not beat it. Uh, okay, level six again. Uh, how long have we been going? Is that an hour? Nearly. Ten more minutes. Right, we can have one more go. Which mode shall I do? Shall I do that mode again, or shall I do the single block one? It's a shame it doesn't show you the high score with the amount of lines that you cleared. I usually prefer to see that than the score. Attack when blocks land. Alright, let's try this one. For the last 10 minutes or so, let's see how we go on with this. I still haven't quite figured out how the uh, leftover bits function. Oh my god, I can't see properly. So... I don't really know how to get it to a place where you can make it move down there. Because I did some sort of combo before where it hits the rubble fell down basically and filled in a gap. Oh, 
I can't do anything with these pieces. What are you, what's going on? Oh my god. I should just give up now. There, somehow made two matches. I don't know where the other one came from. Is that low enough? Yay! Got rid of it. I think it was going to leave anyway. No! I need a straight piece now! Oh my god! And another one, yes, that helped. Get a few single lines. Oh, I really want to get a Tetris plus two. It seems like such a waste, though, buying a machine with a hundred games on it just for one game <laughs> that I actually want to play, but that's the only way you can actually get it officially. And I cannot be bothered to figure out how to get arcade games working in MAME, because I've tried it a few times and it's just so messy. And the amount of different machines and emulators that I want to try and set up with MAME, it's not worth the effort. Because every time I settle into playing one machine, I get another one, either for review that's slightly better, or for myself that's slightly more powerful, and I have to set everything up again, over and over again. It takes more time than it's worth to get name working. Ah, I looked away for a second and nearly messed up there. We're doing pretty good. Level 6 again. This might be a new high score. Oh, maybe not actually because this mode was easier, wasn't it? So I might have done better. Oh, that's the wrong way around. Oh, really? There was nothing there? Somehow getting two lines there, I don't know why. I can't see that far down the screen to know what's going on down there. Level 7, yes. Yeah, I can tell the blocks are starting to move a bit faster. Let's get that down there, yay, hit him again. Level 8. This is definitely the best so far. Whoa, yes, he just freed up space to put that there, that was close. Uh, there's one lower down. There we go, that's got him. Take that. Wow, we've actually pretty much leveled it back out again. Level 9 now. Can we make it to level 10? Ah! It messed my plans up at the last second. That's the scary thing about this mode. That's not going to do anything. I 
I don't understand why some of these lines are happening. Uh, I don't want to put that there! Oh my god. Okay, I guess that's a little better. I really didn't want to fill that whole side up then. What level are we on now? Starting to pick up now. Yeah, it's kind of unpredictable in this mode. It's like, you can't really plan because things will just shift without warning. I don't know why, but when Tetris gets faster, I can actually play it better. How do you explain that? I guess because I'm not doing hard drop now, so it can uh, line up without me panicking. Ah, apart from that. Oh no, wow. Instant death there. He pushes the tiles up and fills in a gap. Yeah, I think that's what was happening. There we go, 121 lines, level 12. And we have been streaming for an hour, so I guess that's it for this game. That was pretty much everything that the game has to offer. Really enjoyed that. So, if you want to see what the cartridge looks like, it is Donkey Kong style, or Pokemon Yellow style. There you go. Really nice bright yellow. So, I hope everyone enjoyed taking a look at that. And I guess we've got time to check out one more game.